Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today we are going to be playing against Little Spooky, and this is a duel, a match duel, which means we are both playing uh, teams that we kind of knew more or less what we were going against. And by that, I mean that uh, we both are playing randomized teams, but it looks like both of us actually have a pretty decent setup, I'd say. And I'm not even all too sure what to start off with, but I feel like a, you just can't go wrong with a bellow. So I'm gonna drop it and uh, just enjoy myself. He just sends a message, of course, a stress team, ha ha ha. Yeah, it is a stress team, so I just uh, went on Google, went to the randomizer, it said like 1, 2, 7, 15, I think it's what that said. And uh, here are 1 and 2, and here's 7, the Man at Arms, and 15, the Antiquarian. So I have... Right here, a Hellion stress team. The very, very rare Hellion stress team. And you might ask, well, is it good? Is it bad? Well, what is it like? And the thing is, it is... It is okay. It is not very good, but it is okay. Especially in certain matchups. In this matchup, it's probably not going to be all that great, because Flare is going to really destroy my debuffs. But it also could be a lot worse. So she does some decent amount of stress with Terrifying Job and does apply debuffs, and she's also relatively difficult to stun, unlike the Crusader, but if she gets pushed to the back, which is quite likely, she's not going to have a good time, because Breakthrough is essentially useless for um, for teams like uh, like what my, my opponent has here, because doing a little bit of damage, it's just really not going to help me but with that Breakthrough. Yeah, it is really not going to help. But right now, I have a feeling that I'm actually going to drop a Vendetta first, believe it or not. I'm going to drop this on the Bounty Hunter, it's their highest dodge character. Then I'm going to go Duelist Advance next round. I'm going to have two rounds of Repulsed up. After that, I'm going to drop Grape Shot. I'm going to have a lot of damage if they try uh, hitting my Harriman. I will not have crits, or there will be like a 5% chance or something, because uh, there is minus 20, minus 20 crit chance on my characters. And okay, it's going to be... Both smoke screen and flare being applied, so not a lot of aim shots coming here from the from the Arbalus Musketeer backline, which I definitely don't mind at all. And uh, I guess in response to that, I'm just going to drop a rejuvenating view of vapors here. You really just can't go wrong with it when you're playing against uh, something like a team here. I do have a feeling that one of my characters is going to get heavily disrupted. I'm also going to have to disagree with the Rampart on my Hellion. I feel like that was a bad play. You should have just gone uppercut immediately. It would have gotten the knockback two positions and more likely a daze. I, I definitely would have gone for that, but yeah. Uh, still quite unlucky that he didn't get the daze on me. And yeah, there goes the uppercut now. So a little late, but definitely not too late. And uh, no days actually, thankfully for us. But yeah, that's going to hurt my Hellion a lot. I'm going to drop a Duelist Advance now. I probably want to focus now on the, the Bounty Hunter here, right? Now, do I even want to drop a Duelist Advance? Do I just want to drop Grape Shot? Oh, the hit chances. Why are they so bad? Oh, minus 20 accuracy. Um, Duelist Advance or just Grape Shot? I'm going to drop Grape Shot instead. Now, uh, missing one character. Missing one character really isn't all that good. He's asking me if Stun and Day's chances are the same. And they are indeed the same. They are. I'm going to tell him. They are. You've been a very, very unlucky person. Actually, gonna drop a defender on my bounty hunter. He probably understood the strategy I was going for here. Oh. Interesting, interesting play. Well, I'm gonna click the Hellion now, and I'm gonna go Breakthrough, which is probably one of the worst abilities in the game, and this is why. Look at this. I'm a, I'm a stress team. Why, why the hell did I use Breakthrough? It's just, it's just so garbage. Of course, if I had Hemlock, it would help me a little bit, but it's still garbage. No, I'm, I'm just doing a little bit of damage. I'm dazing myself. I'm doing even less damage next time I'm forced to use Breakthrough. I only move one position forward. It's just so terrible. It is absolutely horrendous. I could go for a guard here, but I'm probably just... Uh, uh, if he goes for a mark for death... Oh, he doesn't have mark for death, actually. He's one of he's one of those crazy people that <laughs> doesn't have mark for death with a mark team. I, I would not do that. If you're playing a mark team, definitely have mark for death. Sacrifice other Caltrops or Uppercut. Probably Caltrops in this team. Uh, because Uppercut can be pretty darn good. Uh, right now we drop the Bellow first. Yeah, we definitely drop the Bellow first. More Bellow debuffs applied. The Bellow bot is back and he's here to do some damage. So this is a pure on Bellow bot setup. We have Pitfighter Sound for the Prot and the Stress Delt and we have the Eerie Eye. 
So EREI pretty much guarantees, actually guarantees that I get the debuff every single time. And uh, the Bitfighter is almost making me do a little bit more stress. You know, it's barely impactful, but it also makes the Mana Arms chunky. And the chunky Mana Arms with regen and 30 prot, 60 AP guards, means that a team like this is going to have a really hard time getting through it. Unless they use Caltrops or unless I get pushed to the back and then the just Piercing Coral destroys me. It's going to be a... Oh, really greedy finish him, actually. That was, that was quite greedy. I do get to go first next round, but I'm dazed. So, since I'm dazed, I'm gonna have to think my way out of this, essentially. And uh, I think I'm gonna take cover here, or am I? I could just move back to, or I could take cover. Uh, I'm gonna take cover here, actually. I don't want to give him any reason to go come hit by the start of the next round because um that is what he's gonna want to go for because i'm not gonna let him kill my hellion i'm just gonna guard and uh oh okay sniper shot on the home instead interesting play now uh, should i still guard here i i don't feel like i do at this exact moment oh there's still buckshot in play actually that could be really scary do i want to go duelist advance now uh, that's probably gonna get met by a smoke screen that's gonna do a little bit, um, a little bit low damage. He says one off a low roll. Uh, he did like 12. I mean, he did have a bellow debuff. That is, he's lying to me. He would do 13 to 22 damage. Uh, quick, quick, no! Oh my god, I, I didn't click it in time. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks horribly. So I'm, I have a really weird setup right now, with with my mouse and uh, and everything. So. Clicking stuff is really difficult, and he threw me off by lying, because he's going last, which means you should do... Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna send him a massive thank you in the heart. <laughs> that, that, that was really cool of him. Yeah, he is lying to me, though. He should do 13 to 22 damage, but the Velo debuff should be reducing that, so there's no way 12 would be would be one off a min roll. Uh, yeah. Wait. Well, one off a min roll. Yeah. It shouldn't be... Or... Oh no, it should be 11. Yeah, okay, he wasn't lying, actually. He wasn't lying. My math is just uh, out of this world right now. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My math is just absolutely not computing. Wow, that is a pestering vapors moment, actually. You managed to hit everyone without any extra accuracy, and you managed to blight everyone. Even the 60 and the 20. Without any extra ex any extra blight chance. That was pretty good. <laughs> Retribution dodge. Oh, that's just wonderful. That is just wonderful. He sends me a massive bra. Oh, I would too. I would too, my man. Uh, well, after this, he's probably going to drop a sniper shot, which I just regen, then I move forward, or I just yop. And uh, after the yop, I can... I'll drop... Wait, wait, wait. So I drop this, he drops a sniper shot, I drop to zero, and then I do an action. Yeah, yeah, I can I can battle here. Uh, well, there goes the Hellion kill. Yep, there goes the Hellion kill. I could have always dropped the Defender, but this just means I'm going to get a Bellow through earlier, which is really darn nice. So, killing this Hellion is going to take a little more time than he wants to. Uh, he's, he's really going to have to get lucky here. The problem with this team that he has right now is that Stabilizing Tiller is uh, going to bypass guards, but he doesn't really have a way of marking the Hellion consistently, because there's only come hither. But he could go for something else. Now he's gonna drop a Caltrips. I felt like he, sh he should have gone for a come hither and just a sniper shot on the Antiquarian. But even if he did that, I would just take cover and um, and regen as well, even if he got a crit. Like, uh, the things just aren't great for him. But it would have prevented a Yop. I would have been forced to break through into a repulse, which I wouldn't want, and I would just have to move forward. So, kind of a weird one is what you would do there, but uh, you definitely should have gone for come hither actually, considering the Hellion would be heavily disrupted. That's something you always want to do, you always want to disrupt a stupid Hellion. She only has 15 move res, you gotta do it. Yeah, every chance you get, you just disrupt the Hellion, honestly. That's how it goes, that's absolutely how it goes. He's thinking on what to do, uh, honestly you have to get a kill like yesterday. So, if you want to get a kill yesterday, you might have to flare for debuffs here, but I feel like you should do enough damage to the Hellion that it's meaningless. So, you know, you go for a sniper shot, he has four attacking actions, to be honest. He has Rampart, he has a Finish him, which is the killing blow, he has Buckshot, Aim Shot, he has a Sniper Shot. He can just do a lot of things, he can definitely kill my Hellion, even with Guard. Uh, even with Guard, Buckshot could potentially get a kill, but yeah, that's what I, what I was hinting at. If you don't have a Guard Break, or um, if you don't have multiple ways to bypass Guard, you're not going to have that good of a time. 
Yeah, you're absolutely not gonna have that good of a time. Let's drop this grape shot here, no crits, sadly, even though I have to the Vendetta and the Grim Bandana, but it's still gonna be some stress being dealt. That's also a really rough position I've put my Harriman in. And my Harriman in. I'm at 15 HP, which is um which is a prime amount of HP for a mu for a musketeer or an arbals just to roll a little bit high. Or kind of just average and drop me down to zero. And if that happens, I am always forced to guard here because I cannot let that bounty hunter just get a free death blow. He doesn't have finisher actually, so he could not do enough damage. Or uh, like not get the lucky death blow. I oh, that's a knockback. Yeah, that's a knockback. Musketeer with buckshot cartridge. I can't even resist it. Can you imagine not even being able to resist knockback from buckshot? Gee. I'm gonna drop a... Am I gonna drop a breakthrough here? <laughs> a breakthrough into the repulse. Do 3 to 6 damage. Uh, no, I don't think I will. I'm just gonna move forward. This is so cursed. This is really cursed. Yeah, it, this, this is just hell in problems, you know. Can you imagine if I had like a freaking flagellant or even a crusader would be really helpful here. Anything but a Hellion. Anything but a Hellion. An Abomination. Oh, Abomination to break that guard, to just transform, slam, apply, apply massive horror to his entire team. I don't even want to think about it, because I'm playing this stupid Hellion and, uh, you know, I just have to deal with it. She can be good if she doesn't get knocked around like this, obviously. Uh, do I guard here is the question. Well, if I don't guard, there's just a free death blow. Finally a daze, he says. Yeah. Finally, not a self-inflicted daze, because even though daze, I think, is a 100% chance of dazing yourself, yeah, 100% pace, that doesn't mean you can resist it. <laughs> That's not how it works. For some reason, it says 100% pace. Technically, you should be able to resist it, right? No, that's that's... That's not how Red Hook's potato or potato code works. Yeah, that is absolutely not how it works. Also, no act outs. Come on, give me like an act out or two. I, I've been missing those. Uh, I only have two more rounds of regen right now. Do I take cover or do I. Ugh, Festering Vapors. Uh, uh, Festering Vapors is risky, but how much do I mind? I mean, I'm probably gonna get sniper shot crit down to zero, but then I can just drop take cover. Yeah, you know what? Let's go aggressive. Yeah, that's a repost for 12. Uh, doesn't really hurt me all that much. Does he even have shield spike? I don't think he does, actually. <laughs> no, I said no woman. That's one based bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even have shield spike, so Veteran's Gauntlet's giving him some extra damage, but it's really not that much. He should definitely do enough damage here. Oh, you'd have to get very unlikely not, not to do enough damage, and ouch, that hurts. That really does hurt. Okay, right now this is just a problem with playing Mark teams. I just regen out of the store and stealth myself. So if you want to kill my Antiquarian, you have to de-stealth, you have to hit me again, and then you have to get through the death blow res without even having a finisher. It's just, it's just nasty. It's nasty what teams with region can actually do to mark teams like this because they just get totally outpaced in terms of in terms of actions. So just by clicking there and go and going take cover, that costs me one action. Of course, regen just applies for everyone, so I'm not counting that. But that costs me one action, and it's going to essentially cost him like uh, two or three, which is just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Not to mention I could dodge. I have 30 dodge, by the way. Uh, it's going to be your rampart. Dazing your dazing uh, guarding character does not remove the guard. Should it remove the guard? That's a good question. I don't think so. I really don't. I'm not actually sure. That's the first time I've thought about that. What if you daze the character that was guarding someone? I mean, technically he's going to be dazed, so he's going to be like almost stunned, unable to protect someone else as efficiently. Oh, that sounds like a 50-50 magnet. <laughs> if you'd have a 50-50 chance of hitting through the guard. Oh, that is horrible. Please don't do that. No, please, no. No more RNG. We, we have enough RNG already. Uh, oh, double resist, actually. That's good. A little bit of stress being applied as well. Uh, the thing is, if I drop a point-blank shot right now, I die. Yeah. If I drop a point-blank shot right now, I literally die. Because there's just um, aim shot into into finish him. But I feel like I've done enough at this point that I can win. <laughs> Especially if I get a crit 36. There's no way I'd pass that. Come on. Vendetta Highwayman with Grim Bandana and Eagle Eye Talisman. There's no way 
I don't go point blank shot on that masochistic man at arms. He just loved it. He absolutely loved it. Oh, Musketeer does abusive. Okay, if you had any doubts that she'll do enough damage, uh, those are gone right now. Abusive doesn't move forward, sadly. I do believe it has a chance to move forward. I, I do really believe it does. Uh, the wiki says otherwise, but I don't believe the wiki. I, I believe my own guts. <laughs> because I think the wiki isn't properly adapted to, to the Witcher Circus. I do still believe that... Um, Oh, that, that was that was a weird play. I do still believe that Abusive can move forward. That was a really weird play. Why not Sniper shot my hammer, man? You'd have gotten the kill. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess it knocks my Antiquarian back, so I... I mean, knocks her forward, so I can't really use Rejuvenating Vapors anymore. So, you know, good play for sure, but... I don't know. I could go for a 55 here, I could drop a Yop. We definitely dropped a Yop. We don't go for those greedy 55s, we go for we go for this, because we're a stress team, right? We're just gonna get the kill anyway in two rounds. So it's better off that we just do some stress here and also hit the bounty hunter pretty hard. There's minus 15 accuracy on that. He could miss something. Oh that man arms is so screwed. Yeah, he's absolutely screwed right now. My entire team is in shambles apart from the men at arms though. Uh, this could not be all that great. If that backline just manages to survive for a while, and they get some pretty lucky death blows on my characters here, they could still win. But they do need the lucky death. So yeah, not all is one for us right now. It's gonna be a come hither. It's actually gonna allow me to do rejuvenating vapors, but do I want to do it right now is the question. Or do I want to get a crit point blank shot into a heart attack on the bounty hunter? Do it! Okay, no crit. That's still a lot of damage, though. That's still a lot of damage. And right now, if he wants to go for a finish him, he just uh, he just oofs himself because uh, after that, there's just Yop. And uh, those two characters are gone. And after those two characters are gone, I don't feel like I should lose here. I have extra death will res on this Antiquarian, so she should be... Should. Should be. Very, very difficult to kill. And after I just drop Rejuvenating Vapors, yeah, it's rough. It is pretty darn rough. This is probably why you shouldn't run a man at arms on a team like this. You should run like a Crusader instead. I, I don't I don't really like the setup. Crusader, Bounty Hunter, and the uh, Arbol's Musketeer. I think that's pretty dated. But uh, it is it is not that bad of a setup, honestly, you know? It, it is okay if you have the Crusader here, because you can you have a pretty good offense with the double backliner and the bounty hunter, and you also have a way of breaking guards with the stuns and also having an additional healer, so it is definitely a competent team. Um, most definitely competent. I could do enough damage here. Do I do 10? Hmm, I'm not sure actually. Well, I can cause a heart attack for sure. So I'm probably just gonna do that. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. I don't think I would be able to do enough damage because I am at this store. So, let's see, what's my damage base? Actually, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what my damage base is. Uh, a little bit of extra stress on the Musketeer, not too bad. Damage base is 8 to 17 on the Hellion, and with, uh, yeah, I'd have 6 to 13, so kind of a 50 50 of doing and Interesting, yeah, I don't have any extra damage. It's gonna be <laughs> uppercut on the men arms. Yeah, that's rough, buddy. That's rough, buddy, but he should still be able to get the kills. Oh, wait, no, he can't. He actually can't get the kills. The one time the bounty hunter actually has an act out with the rational. Yeah, that's true. That is true, bruh, that is a bra moment indeed, I'll have to agree with you. I'm gonna drop Rejuvenating Vapors here. I think I'd be a fool not to, because after this, instead of just re-guarding someone... Also, this this Harman is probably dead, right? Yeah, there's Sniper Shot with a, with a Mark, he's probably dead. But yeah, instead of just going for another guard here, I'm just gonna drop a Bellow, and that's probably gonna do enough stress with the Bounty Hunter. Or does it? Pitfighter's Helm should give me enough stress. Ah, this is frustrating, he says. Why is it frustrating? You can you can get a kill right now. No, you fool! Why do you do that? I mean, I, I guess it kind of makes sense, but... Oh, I can't do enough stress anymore. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. It goes first next round as well. Okay, that's actually not too good for me. Uh, we don't do enough stress either. Uh, oh, okay. That, that's actually a blessing in the curse. Yeah, that's a blessing in disguise right there. Uh, getting that extra stress and not causing a heart attack is a blessing in disguise. Because what's going to happen is, even if he gets a kill right now, unless one of these two, uh, one of these two buffoons act out and make him, make him have a heart attack, I will be able to just get a kill by doing nine damage. So, I'm hoping that uh, Duelist Advance is going to do enough. Yeah, it, it will definitely do enough as long as he doesn't die, which he probably will. 
He's gonna go for the finish. I'm not a confirmed chance of getting a death blow, but he does get it, uh, thankfully for him. And right now, uh, I go for this. I'm out of this store, so 8 to 17. Please don't cut me on this. Okay, that's good. Crit for 21? Wow, Hellion, that's surprising. Good job. Good job, Hellion. Looks like she can still do some damage if she gets crits, huh? Yeah, that's not too bad. That crit. Yeah, it, it was unnecessary, though. I only had like a 1 in 10 chance of not doing enough damage. The crit was unnecessary. I would have dealt enough stress anyway. Uh, he was at 196, so I, I would have been totally fine there. The crit was totally unnecessary. You'd take 5 stress from dropping to this door. That's a 5% chance of getting a death blow, my man. We we don't take those. Only 135 J-Man is allowed to get those death blows. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. He's not that lucky. No 5% death blow. Yeah, that's super unlucky, isn't it? That's super unlucky. I don't feel like my anti crane has dodged a single ability, by the way. Despite having 30 dodge and him having... I mean, I guess he has a really good accuracy base. I can't really complain to him. There's also Buckshot Cartridge right now, so that's gonna hit uh, pretty hard, I think. He can, he can cure the Blights, but uh, going defensive right now is not gonna save him, because when these two corpses go away, which I have no idea when that is, uh, because I don't keep t I don't keep count on the turns, so I'm too busy commentating on, on the match. Uh, since I don't know when, when that is, but I feel like I feel like it should be soon. Fuck, it should be relatively soon. I missed the 90 again. Was it a 90? Damn. That's sad. That is pretty sad. Oh, I don't miss the 77, though. Such is the way of the Witcher Circus. There is absolutely no justice in this game, and absolutely no justice in this world. That's, uh, that's what I usually say, and it is quite true, sadly. Well, not sadly for me right now. I'm, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Um, yeah, I, I... Can he really come up? right now. I mean, I'm just gonna... There's gonna be a ball, right? But I'm just gonna regen. Yeah, these teams feel so oppressive. They really do. I'm just gonna regen here and... Uh, mm, let's do this. Just to give myself a little bit of a bigger heal and the, and the buff. Oh, that cures Caltrips as well! Wow, I totally forgot I could actually cure Caltrips with the Adrenaline Rush. Okay, yeah, that's helpful. That's pretty darn helpful. I, I should have thought about that way earlier. Oh, great though. That crit could be it could be really good for him. Okay, maybe things aren't as good as I think they are. <laughs> nice crit heal. It healed me for an extra one. Okay, finally we miss. Now that paranoid uh, airball should have definitely dodged a few more of these melee. Especially with the minus 20 accuracy on one. I could drop a flash powder here. I do believe I have flash powder. I don't have any extra stress dealt on it though, so I'm not really doing all that much. Uh, I think we just fast ring vapors, honestly. Yeah, I, re I don't really see a reason not to. You know, it's a little bit extra damage, it's a little bit extra stress. It has a chance of critting, it has uh, it has some blight being applied, and yeah, overall it's just better. And I don't feel like he's gonna miss all that much. Uh, only if he went for me antiquarian would he be able to, is, uh, to miss. I don't think this is winnable because of the anti. Yeah, anti is just... she's kind of a win condition on her own, honestly. If you can let the rejuvenation, uh, rejuvenating vapors work with the tears of the lost, you know, just extra restoration duration, it just, oh, it hurts. It really hurts. Some people ask me, uh, why would you bring tears of the lost? Like, 33% restoration duration, does it really do all that much? And, oh, it does. Having that rejuvenating vapors for one more round can be the difference. It can be the absolute difference. Yeah, don't don't even think two ways about it. It can be the absolute difference between victory and defeat. This uh this one more round of rejuvenating. Because uh, sometimes you only be able to drop one, and having that rejuvenation for the next round pretty much gives you a free action on the, on whoever's or on whoever else is also getting focused. Or if it is the anti current as well, you know. Either or. Um Good, maybe <laughs> he doesn't do enough damage to the corpse. <laughs> He's trying to shoot the corpse, by the way. I, I barely even commented on that. I feel like he did a mineral. I mean, it's paranoid with two damage debuffs, so paranoid's minus 25 damage. Yeah, just paranoid things. I'm actually gonna buff up Adrenaline Rush again. I feel like my wicked hack is gonna hurt. That corpse should be gone now, right? No, one more round. Jeez. How late was it that I actually oofed that red arms? It's taken ages. Now I have two regions done, so Tears of the Lost, just wonderful trinkets, really not a reason not to take it if you're playing, especially if you're playing kind of a defensive team, because 
Virtue Chance, really, really clutch. Even if it doesn't work, minus 15 stress taken, really, really helpful. Plus 20% debuff resist could be very helpful against uh, against debuffs, but obviously. It, could, it is very helpful against Bellow debuffs, that uh, would typically prevent you from getting killed with fast Ring Vapors. And it is very helpful against Vendetta debuff for that minus 20 dodge. So there really isn't a reason not to take it, I'm, I'm gonna have to say. Tears of the Lost is wonderful, and also the Rejuvenation on top, so if it was only the Rejuvenation, would you take it? Probably not. Probably not, even though it would still be a decent trinket just with the Rejuvenation. But having those other three things on top just makes it great. And some people would ask, well, why do you have Virtue Chance and Minus Stress taken? Don't you want to get Virtues? Why do you have Minus Stress taken? Isn't that counterintuitive? Well, in the base game it would be, not in the circus. Having minus stress taken is always good if you're playing against a stress team. Because you're not only are you not confirmed to get that virtue, even if you do get that virtue, you still want the minus stress taken because there you still go to heart attack when you get um when you get uh when you get virtuous, you still go to heart attack. Let's see, seven to fourteen. Oh get those damage rolls, that feels great. Oh both corpse is gone as well. Ow. Oh, that's powerful. That is power right there. Yeah, but of course it's gone. You you want minus stress taken and the virtue on top potentially. That is that is really what you want. So technically, if you had if you didn't have the minus stress taken, you get the virtue faster, kind of. You'd kind of get the virtue faster, but you really don't want to get uh, an affliction check faster. You want to delay them as much as possible, and if you get a virtue out of it, then great. That means that you're not going to have any act outs at the very least. Because sometimes virtues can be not as impactful as they as they seem, and sometimes they can completely change the match. If you play a stress team and you go against a courageous uh, crusader or a courageous antiquarian, they're pretty much the antiquarian's pretty much going to have minus fifty percent stress taken, and that's going to be even more if it is um, an antiquarian with. Uh, uh, with a bolster on top, so minus 50% stress taken, minus 65 with a bolster. It's just, it's just GG, honestly. It's absolutely just GG. And uh, speaking of the game as well, it might be just GG as well because I feel like the musketeer is gonna die quite soon. And uh, yeah, there's also a yop coming in right now. So let's see. Oh, I wanted to use the yop first, but I forgot. I dazed myself. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Just such a bad character. Such a bad character, this silly Hellion. She did okay in this match, but I could have won this way faster and way more reliable if I didn't have a stupid Hellion. I'm gonna have to say, I'm. Do I drop a Wicked Hack or do I drop a Yop? I feel like a Wicked Hack is better here. If we're gonna crit, we do just one on the spot. But sadly, no crits. Yeah, Hellion needs a buff. She totally needs a buff. I, I believe she's the weakest character in the circus, even weaker than Plague Doctor, because Plague Doctor kind of has a role. You know, unless you unless you disrupt her, then she's really not going to have that good of a time. But if she actually manages to stay in position four and spam play grenade for blight and uh, use her heals to cure bleeds and blights on both characters, she's actually kind of nuts. So yeah. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed those randomized teams. I definitely did. It was pretty fun playing against a little spooky. And uh, thank you for that act out. Uh, I mean, thank you for that pass with the musketeer. That was just wonderful. I I did a pass with the highman. He passed with the musketeer. Absolute GG's to my man. Absolute GG's, and I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.